I got pregnant at 16 years old. I had completed my senior four. It was in my back and I got pregnant. Did you know that according to World Health Organization, one in every four Ugandan adolescents aged 15 to 19 are actually already pregnant with their first child? According to the Uganda Demographic and Health Survey Report released in 2023, in 2021, Busoga region registered 46,337 teenage pregnancies. And our maternal mortality and mobility ratio stands at 336 out of every 100,000 live births of mothers who die due to childbirth-related complications. And 17.2 of these that die are actually adolescents aged 15 to 19. And most of these mothers and the pregnant adolescents die of preventable these complications like pregnancy, this hypertension, uh, PPH, prolonged labor, and other complications that come and are preventable. I support the drive to end teenage pregnancies in Usoga. I support the drive to create awareness in schools among teen girls so, to us to prevent teenage pregnancies. But I also wonder who follows up on those girls who are already pregnant. Who shows them the direction? Who mentors them into ma motherhood? Because if we have many of these girls not attending antenatal, not getting the help they need to go through childbirth successfully, then we are going to raise our maternal mortality and mobility ratios even higher than they already are. And who is supposed to play that part? Me and you. My name is Daphne Naebare. I'm a midwife working with the International Institute of Health Sciences where I teach, but I'm also the founder of Zoe Women's Health Initiative community-based project that is passionate about maternal health promotion. I work with teen moms, pregnant teen moms, I work with senior moms and we run our activities through two programs. We have the Zoe Teen Moms Club and we also have the Zoe Women's Club for Senior Mothers. And what we basically do is around three goals. Our number one goal is to reduce the number of high-risk pregnancies in Rusoga. Our number two is reduce the number of obstetric complications by ensuring that women and the girls have all the information they need concerning maternal health and number three is to create a space a safe space where mothers and teen moms can meet and have peer-to-peer -peer support critical conversations on maternal health health education emotional support to be able to handle the challenges that come with being a mother so our teen moms club will be met in two years this august and with our first cohorts we've worked with 20 teen moms what we basically do with them is to ensure that they are attending antenatal, they are delivering in a health facility under the help of a skilled health worker, is to ensure that they also have enough information concerning childbirth. We walk this journey with them from the time when they are pregnant, we recruit them when they are pregnant, and then we walk a journey of nine months with them while having critical conversations with their families concerning the future and giving these girls a second opportunity. But we also talk about their expectations and their dream because we want to give them a chance to rise up again and dream again after childbirth. So our first cohort, which will be uh, exiting in uh, August 21st, all have delivered safely and they have healthy babies. We've walked this journey with them, a journey of over a year with them. We've been training them on uh, childbirth related information that they need to know, how to prepare for labor, how to uh, identify danger signs, how to identify a sick newborn, how to feed a baby who's six months and starting to eat other solid foods. But also we meet every two weeks. For them, we meet as a group and they share conversations around motherhood with their, the, the other teen moms of their age. We are proud to say that we are promoting maternal health through reaching out and supporting those teen moms that are already pregnant. And some of these are going to be our ambassadors in schools. But within the period of two years, we have been able to encourage girls to carry their children or their pregnancies to term. We don't have any of the girls who has attempted abortion or has aborted. We've been able to support them to go through pregnancy and childbirth and all of them have had successful deliveries and their babies are healthy. We've been able to train them on nutrition. We train them on everything concerning maternal and child health. We've also been able to challenge families to take their girls back to school. Currently, we have about three girls who are back in secondary school. Two are sponsored by their families. 
one has a, a half bursary from the school and we support them as well to ensure that they keep in school. We also have about three girls who have joined skilling, two are doing, are doing uh, tailoring and one is doing hairdressing. These are the things, our hope is that as support increases, we are able to take more of these girls back to school. We also have girls who don't want to go back to school, but they want to start small businesses, to take care of themselves and their children. So our hope is that as God provides, we are able to make their dreams come to a reality. I joined Zoe Teen Mothers Club when I was six months pregnant. I have learned how to share with others and also have got some encouragement of going back to school. And right now I'm at school. I'm in senior three. My dream is being a doctor. And also I believe, I believe in myself I'll be a doctor. I joined the Zoe Teen Moms Club when I was four months pregnant and I got to learn very many things like how to take care of the baby, the diet I'm supposed to be on when I'm pregnant. I learned very many things, the food to eat when I'm pregnant. Right now I'm staying with the baby daddy and he has plans for me. If the baby grows well, he can. He wants to support me to because they want to do a course of plumbing, he's willing to pay for me. And after, if, if that fails, he's ready to do for me a business, a good one, so that they can be earning a living. So it is so challenging that there are still more mothers out there who are not able to come and attend the services. And as this being a challenge, we need to kind of come up with interventions to look for those mothers, the young mothers in the communities who are not yet free with the, our facilities to, to come and access the services. And maybe the second challenge could be uh, being that most of them are young, below 19 years. They have fear to approach health workers. So this means we may need or we need more ways of sensitizing the community, sensitizing the young girls, uh, even in schools, reach out, reaching out to schools or even reaching out to communities where these girls are coming from. And another challenge is about the, also face issues with the parents. Uh, most especially these parents, when they find out that a child has conceived, they tend to kind of hide them out of the community, which is most dangerous to these young girls. Because for us, we expect them to attend at NATO so that we are able to come up with the best interventions to be able to carry their pregnancies. But in case this child is kept away from the community and away from the facility, meaning they are going to face uh, more issues, most especially how to seek services and uh, especially during the time of delivery. We want to appreciate Bsonga Kingdom for allowing to partner with us. They provide us venue where our girls meet at the Bsoga Library at a free cost. All our activities are covered there. Then we want to appreciate also Innovation Village Ginger who hosts our Women's Health Club and other activities that we have. And other people in the community who have been really supportive and the village health team members who have always recommended these girls to us and Bugembe Health Facility who are always receiving these girls for Antinental, following them up deliveries and also identifying girls that need to walk this journey with us and then they contact us and we are able to recruit those girls as well. I want to challenge the community in Ubsoga. I want to challenge the community in Uganda. I want to challenge parents, teachers, and all other stakeholders to please wake up and take part in this. You may not have the midwifery knowledge that I have to share with the, student, the children, but the support, that few minutes of counseling that you offer them, the teachers, the few minutes of your lesson that you sacrifice to talk to the girls about teenage pregnancies, about keeping in school, about abstinence and keeping themselves until they are done with school. It counts. You may not gather them like we do at Zoe Women's Health Initiative, the Teen Moms Club. You may not be able to follow them up when they go to hospital or whether they have delivered or even attended antenatal. But the 
the kindness that you show that pregnant girl encourages her to push on. So I want to challenge all of us stakeholders to join effort to fight teenage pregnancy, but also fight and reduce the ratios of maternal mortality.